Hi everyone, so today we're going to just uh, install one of these newly arrived Linux unit for the BABF and SY territory. So that's the package we're gonna just receive it. So open it up, very nice and simple. You'll get your DAB antenna and you'll just get your harness and CAN bus controls right here. That's all you will receive in your package, plus the actual unit, RCA is built in um, to the unit and you've got your usbs and front camera and a few other bits and pieces that during the installation we'll just go through it and i'll show you where to plug each one of those ones it's just a eight mil socket a screwdriver and a panel removal tool and um, to pop up the top bit and there is four screws uh, four socket number eight and then you've got your bcm control in the bottom to unplug it and this whole unit will come out so we just put the gear and drive make sure your handbrake is up that bit, most of the time it just cracks, but be careful with it. If you just open it gently, it will not crack due to the sunlight for many years that just sits there. It could crack, but if you're a bit more gentle with it, it should just pop. All right guys, so once you remove the top hat, we'll just undo this one Phillips screw here, right in the center. Undo that, as simple as that, comes off. Then you've got the trim around the gear shifter, it simply pops out. Four clips holds it. We just remove it. Generally, we don't put it on top of the dash not to scratch it, so we just put it somewhere else not to scratch anything. And then you've got two other screws here that holds these side trims. So we just undo those ones. That's one of them. And two of the panels move just like that. And then you've got this little cigarette lighter with a little pocket here that needs to come off, but it's held by two screws on the two sides. So we undo these screws. And that should just pop out. Simple as that. And undo the cigarette lighter plug and put this thing aside. A bit hard to see but right underneath there i'm trying to bring the camera as close as possible you will have four of your um, bcm plugs so there is your antenna and that's one of your bcm plugs that one that's number two right there and that's number three and number four is the last one here so we'll just go ahead and just unplug them um, so it can just and do the BCM, we'll just uh, let the unit come out. That's one of the plugs. That's two. And that's our radiant antenna. Some of them are at the back of the unit, some of them are here, so. Plug number three. And we go number four. And that's it, all the plugs are done. The BCM is disconnected, so we're now we need our socket number eight. There's, as you can see, one here, one deeper inside there. Two of our screws on this side and two on this side. And that's it, that should just technically pop out. That's all we have. Nothing else is holding it. Okay guys, um, so the unit is out. We need to remove the air vent. That's what we need from, from the old system. We need the air vent. We need the remote or the key receiver. 
the remote uh, wireless key remote receiver locking and unlocking we need to remove that we need to remove the air vents and we need to remove the body control module the bcm so that's all the three parts we need from the old system plus these yellow clips that we will need them to be removed and going to the new unit which i'll show you guys how to just remove that as well in a minute once those ones are removed new unit that's our new unit we just get all those bits and pieces put it in that one so just bear in mind that you do have choice of a four colors that's the factory gray as close as possible to match the factory coloring but you do have the choice for silver piano black or carbon so whichever you prefer and they're both the same price same sizing same function same everything just the color is different all right we'll just go ahead and remove the air vents and <clears throat> bits and pieces that we need from this one to that one we're just being a bit gentle with everything not to damage anything uh best thing to do is just to remove the sensor first it has just two screws and just lift it up a little bit and just pops out from there and just take it to the side now we gotta just undo the air vents which has one screw on top and two in the bottom And that should just give us our uh, air vent out. That's it, that just goes back in there and the screws in the same spot. Now we gotta just remove the BCM. Some people believe that we don't have to remove this one, we can still access the BCM. Yes, they're right. If you can, you don't have to. As long as you can get this BCM nice and gently out without damaging anything, then that's fine. That's all we care. So remove the little sensors or you can just keep it there. It's always safe to keep that one there so we, you don't deprogram your remotes. So if we unplug that and the keys are inside the switch, there is a high chance that you will deprogram your remote for your um, door locking and unlocking. But if you have it always in, then you're safe. And make sure you do not leave the keys in the ignition. That's all we need from here. We can put these ones back to what it was, put the brackets on it, and that's good to go from here. Okay, so these are the little screws that comes <clears throat> in the package with it, and this is this is the one that from the factory unit we remove, and that's the one that comes uh, in the package with it. So please use this one. But if you do not have access to this, or you've lost it, or damaged, or it's not in the package for some reason, even if you have to use this one, you can use it, but make sure you put a couple of washers so it doesn't go too deep inside, will touch the motherboard inside and either the Bluetooth or the sound or something will stop working. So if you have to use this, please use it with washers. But these are the correct screws that comes in the package with it to use it, the little short ones. You can use two screw on each side is more than enough. I'm just putting temporarily one on each side. But if you use top and bottom screws, that's more than enough. So one there, one there, that, that, that's more than enough, plenty. 
Okay, so now we have our PCM uh, mount, which will just go facing that way. So where this small little plug is, just going in. Then you can just uh, use those longer screws and you can just go right in there. That's how it will screw inside here. And that's it. That's one, two, three, and four of them. That little sensor, you can remove this little plastic part of it, which we don't need it anymore, or you can just uh, leave it inside there. So we just make it stand up. <coughs> that little thing will just put it back where we removed it from. So this label up always, the label up. There's one side no label, one side is label. Just label up, match it back to the spot that you removed. These are the two little screws that we removed from it. The same little screws goes back onto it. These little yellow plastic clips that we removed from the original fascia goes back in here. And two of them is in the bottom here. Now I'll just make it as nice and neat as possible because when you're putting the unit back in, it might not just fit properly if it is hanging outside. So it's really important to just find a nice little spot for it to just hide it or secure it somewhere neatly underneath here. Wherever possible, but just make sure it's nice and neatly. Uh, covered it's out of the way so when you put in the unit it will not block your way to stop you that's about it guys now we've got <coughs> these cables that it is attached from the back of the actual unit that's not removable I'll undo it and we'll just go through it one by one so you've got two USB ports that are coming out of back of the unit one of them says CarPlay which is for your CarPlay and Android Auto you can tap into it a wired CarPlay and wired Android Auto. Although the unit has wireless Android Auto and wireless CarPlay, so it wouldn't need to plug in. But if you need to plug in a wired one, make sure you plug it to the one that says CarPlay and the other one says USB. So that's just a USB data reading for music and videos. That's for CarPlay. Then you've got a couple of other cables. That's for your external microphone. If you wish to add an additional external microphone, you plug it into this one. And this little red one, it says front camera power, 12 volt. So if you're running a front camera, this is a dedicated power for the front camera. If you haven't selected from the screen, you will not have any power here. So there will not be no power. But if you select front camera from the screen, then it will give it power. Parking, which is your handbrake video in motion. That's optional if you want to connect it or not. That's your reversing camera power. So if you're running a reverse camera, that's your power. And that's your front camera video in. So it says F cam video. So that's your front camera video input. That's for the video, that's for the power for the front camera. And the negative for the front camera, you don't really need to uh, connect it because it will get the negative from the video body. But it's optional. If you wish to, you can connect it. And you've got the main power harness and you've got your DAB antenna. The DAB antenna, There's little connector here that just connects to these ones. So it just says a DAB antenna will just plug into the one on the left side and that just taps into that. And this part of it, you'll just rip it off very gently and stick it um, into the um, AP lab. All right, guys, so we just plug it in now. As we said, everything is ready. So the best thing is to just run your 
USBs inside the glove box or underneath the compartment here in the little storage pocket that you have. So the USB cables drop at the back there, just you can grab it here. So it's nice and easy to access it. But for now, we'll just uh, drop it to the glove box department. And there's just one plug, this white big plug, we'll just plug it in. Make sure you give it a good push to make sure everything has clicked in. And give this CAN bus and the rest of your cables up on here so nothing will stop you uh, from pushing it down. And that little extra cable that you see, that's for your external AC controller, which I will introduce you guys in a few minutes once I just push these things a little bit inside to make this part a bit neat. I'll show you guys what does that do and how it works and whether you guys need it or not. That's an option. It's quite handy to have it. It's a very good little option, but it's up to you. All the AC controls, the climates and the stuff comes on the screen. You can control it from the screen. But if you want to just make things a lot more easier for yourself, then yes, you can grab one of those ones as well. And that fits nice and neatly right where it needs to be. So just once you hit that click on the two sides, that's perfectly fine. And then we have to plug in the BCM modules from the bottom. So those four plugs that we unplugged, we have to just plug them back in and then we give it a shot and try to see, make sure everything is working. Don't forget your radio antennas and that's your cigarette lighter power. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, six plugs in the bottom here. All right guys, so it's all being plugged in and now we have to just put the top hat back into it, the screws and the side panels. Um, and of course the little cigarette lighter plugs in back the same way that it was goes back into the same spot clicks in putting the screws back on and the side panels Okay, so here we are. Side plastic panels goes back exactly the way that it was. a few USBs which you can just leave it there and the top hat screw just gets screwed on and as I said there is quite a number of options for the top hat as well that you can just get the triple gauge holders with the digital um, gauges on it that connects to your OBD but that's basically that's about it. That's the unit is completely installed and we're going to just fire it up and test it. Yeah, we're running 
out of petrol. Okay. Okay, so the first thing first comes up, it just selects your language and then just select your region or country and uh, take marker and go. That's our radio and that's our home screen. Let's see if we have any car play. If I could just borrow a phone that I could just connect to the car play and test some music and a few other things. So we're going to just test our um, uh, AC controls. So the AC controls can come in two different ways. From the home screen, um, you can just select the little icon on the second page where it says AC. Or you could just uh, tap basically the AC button. It will bring up your AC information. So just tap that. It will bring up your AC controls. If the vehicle is single zone or dual zone, we gotta just go to the settings. So we just, as soon as it comes up, we're gonna test our fan speed. We have no fan speed at all. No control, no fan speed, nothing. Low, up, down, nothing is going on. So it means it is set for the dual zone. In order to set it for the single zone, we'll just go to the settings. Just go to general setting. Slide down to factory setting. Find that factory setting. Yep, factory mode. Tap on that, and the password is double eight double eight. Go into it. Select it says vendor, Sinbasi, brand, Ford, model. We'll find the old Ford territory single zone. So old Falcon, old territory single zone. Say okay, apply, and tick mark, and we'll reboot. All right, so once we set it on a single zone, that little temperature thing comes on the driver's side and you will have all your fan speed, your modes, uh, everything works from the mode buttons. Um, so you have full access from it by tapping that little AC button. Or you can just bring up the same page from the um, icon. From the touch screen, you can bring it up or from that button, you can bring it up, whichever is um, easier for you. So all your traction control, door locking, lights, trip computer, that, that all up just comes up and works as, as pretty normal. So all your steering wheel buttons with the volume up and volume down is working perfectly fine. We'll try to just connect our CarPlay and see if that gonna... Oops, no, first we have to connect our Bluetooth. We're just trying to just uh, connect the Bluetooth. Once the Bluetooth is connected, automatically we'll just kick into um, CarPlay. Uh, and if you're using an Android phone, it will just automatically kick into the um, Android Auto. All right, so once the phone is connected, it will just ask you, do you want to connect to the wireless Android Auto? We just say, yes, we can. We'll just go there and that's our CarPlay. Uh, use, use CarPlay from here, apologies. So that's our wireless CarPlay that just start working. And so, don't need that one anymore. All your volume controls from the steering wheel. And back to the home screen. Uh, settings. You can just go to the sound settings. You've got all your equalizers. You can set it to whatever you prefer. I'll just put it on a rock. Watch, watch, whatever, whatever you prefer. Filters and then reset. You don't want to reset it. On and off, faders and balance. That's about it, guys. If any questions, let me know. All right guys, so one more quick video for the external little AC controllers. If you guys wish to just purchase one of these one as a separate thing to have while you're driving, it's just really nice and convenient. Just have it right underneath your fingers. So the mode will come up just like that, right underneath the screen. So if while you're on a phone call or a reverse camera or something, it will just pop up right in the bottom right there. 
very nice and neatly uh, and it controls right underneath your hand so if you're increasing the temperature or decreasing you can just see on the both side that just it has few options here so temperature plus temperature minus and the rear demister and a mode button and the AC on and off and uh, of course the fan speed Temperature up, down, AC on, AC off, AC on, and the mode is which one is the mode? Right here, so that's the mode button. If we change the mode, as you can see, it's quite a little handy little device to just add on um, for it. And you can just, um, once the headlights are on, it will just turn on, it has lights as well. So at night time, it will just give you more view. Not sure if it's visible right now because quite a lot of brightness here. If we can make a bit of a shadow on it, just like that. Can you do that? Yeah, right there. So on, off, on and off. But yeah, it's quite a lot more visible at night time. If you can just put your whole light right there. Um, there you go. Doesn't like your hand, huh? Nope, nope, it doesn't like you. But I mean, it's quite visible anyway, so on and off. So it just on, turns on and off um, with the light, the brightness of the unit with the headlights. So yeah, as I said, it's quite a really convenient little option to add on. instead of having that full giant screen come up there it's it's very convenient to have one of these ones with it so you can have this option in the bottom i mean it, it, it's not compulsory you can always just tap the ac button um, it will bring you the full screen and you can adjust it from here anyway but just say you're in a phone call or you're reversing your car and you at the same time you want to adjust something it's quite a bit annoying but you can just get one of these ones to solve that issue as well so let's just say you're in a car play mode and if I tap the AC button it will just take me off from the complete screen and just brings up the complete screen of the um, car play while I can um, just if I have one of these external AC controllers right here all I gotta do is just control it from here so I'm still in the same page to listen to um, do whatever I do on my car play like maps and stuff so I wouldn't lose my direction so if the maps are open uh, I can still have my climate control right in the bottom without going to just to the full screen of climate control. But if I don't have that, then I have to just do all the adjustment. After 30 seconds, it will go back to my maps or to whatever I was doing. After 30 seconds, it will go. But in that 30 seconds, if I'm close to a turn or something, I might lose the direction. But having one of these ones is quite handy.